I'm going to start with the learning check. What are the three main components of blood? Hopefully you get this. So if you spin it down, that's a way to separate these. And these are those three components, plasma, buffy coat, and erythrocytes. If you called any of these layers something slightly different, that's still correct, like red blood cells or erythrocytes, that's fine. So now what I want to do is break down the components of plasma, this one right here, and tell you about the things that are in it. So plasma is mostly water. This is where the water compartment of, of your blood is. So remember, extracellular fluid is either interstitial fluid or plasma. That's because plasma is where the fluid is in your blood. Red blood cells, of course, have fluid inside the cells as intracellular fluid. So plasma is actually 92% water. You do not need to memorize these percents, but just to give you an idea of what this stuff is. It's about 7% protein. And the proteins that make it up, the most common one is albumin. Some of you may have heard of albumin. So serum albumin is something you use in some, some labs, maybe other biology labs. Um, kind of a side note, serum is the same thing as plasma, but it's when the blood coagulates. Um, so when you do this kind of separation, you typically can put an anticoagulant in to keep the platelets from, and all the other clotting factors from initiating clotting. Um, so if, if the, those proteins are still in the plasma, then it's plasma. Well, actually, we'll get to that one in just a moment. Um, so serum is a very similar term. We'll be using the term plasma because we typically talk about it when coagulation has not occurred. And we'll get back to coagulation later as well. But if you turn the term serum, that's what it is. It is the same, very similar to plasma, but it is going to um, not contain the clotting factors because the blood has clotted. Okay. So albumin is the most common protein. Um, it's a transport for vesicle for vehicle for fatty acids and steroid hormones. So for remember how we needed transport for those hydrophobic molecules. Um, they can't just travel in the plasma by themselves. Albumin does this, isn't that cool? So transport, it also just having proteins in the plasma is going to be important when we get to capillary action and flow across capillaries. So the osmotic pressure in the blood vessels is going to matter and proteins are gonna to contribute to that. So just the fact that it's here in your blood the presence of albumin is going to be important. Um, those are the two main, main factors is the maintaining osmosis, um, that gradient, as well as transport of those fatty acids and steroid hormones. Then we've got the second most abundant is globulins. Yes, like immunoglobulins, for example. So these are very variable in structure and type and what, what exactly they do. Um, the, it's the gamma globulins, so that's IgGs that are involved in immunity. Um, antibodies is also another name for them. Immunoglobulins is a type of globulins. So, and these are very prevalent, so the diversity of, of types. Um, lastly, the least abundant is fibrinogen. And this is that clotting factor. So this will talk about the pathway by which this becomes fibrin to initiate blood vessel repair when you have damage. So serum doesn't contain this anymore because it's somewhere else. That'll make a little more sense when we've gotten to clotting, but um, when, that's enough. Okay, there's also then lastly going to be basically about 1%, so very little, that's gonna be like nutrients of various types, electrolytes, so positively and negatively charged ions like hydrogen, potassium, and then some wastes as well. Um, there's a small amount of like carbon dioxide and oxygen carried in the plasma that we'll see when we get to those systems. So that would be a part of nutrients and wastes as well. 